Hello and welcome to a new Pico video. I know a few of you have been asking about this. It's it's been quite a while, uh, as seems to be a, a bit of a trend with my series. Is, is, is. So in this video, we are going to make a little. We're, we're going to carry on with our little project, and we're going to make a way of showing like text messages on the screen. So like we're not going to give it a specific purpose in this video, but you would use it for like dialogue, notifications, anything really. So we're just going to look at a way to do that, which. I will clarify from the start, as I always do, I am not an expert in Pico. I am learning this as I go. So I am by no means saying that this is the best way to do it. In fact, I'm almost certain it won't be the best way to do it, but it is the way that I've figured out. And I've done this without really looking at any tutorials or anything. So it's almost guaranteed to not be the best way to do it. But hopefully watching me fumble and faff around helps other people avoid my mistakes. So let's get our project loaded up. So. I had to remind myself of this, but as you can see, we've got a little dude, he walks around and I think we, yeah, we made it so he can take damage, although nothing happens when you take damage. And that's pretty much it. And we had our little level for here, but we never really did anything else. Maybe that'll be something for, a, probably to do a time lapse, time lapse level or something of, um, you know, making the rest of the level, making this look a little bit better and also fixing some issues with the tiles. Cause like right now, if I walk down here, you know, you're not supposed to be able to do that. And then you have the opposite problem. If you go upwards, but you can't get right to the edge, but that's easy enough to fix. It just needs the tiles redrawing a bit more intelligently, but that's not what we're here today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new tab. Let's call it game text. And we're going to create a function in here, which is going to be called init text, which is fairly self-explanatory. This is just going to be an initialization thing. So before we forget, let's go straight over here and call it. And then in the initialization, we're going to create a text value, which is not local. So this is going to be accessible anywhere. Although really it only needs to be accessible in one place, but until I think of a better way of doing it, this is how we're going to do it. And it's going to have two values. And the first value is going to be a bool, which is going to be called active. And to start with, we're going to set it as true. And then the other one is going to be a string. Actually, it's going to be an array of strings. We'll get to why that is shortly. And that's going to contain the actual text that we're going to say. And let's, for the sake of testing, before when we get going, let's set that now in the initialization. So we're going to set it to equal and then, I don't know, let's just put hello and then for a second one, how are you? Why not? So that's our init text function. So next we need to actually draw our text. So we'll do that with a new function, cleverly called draw text. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a load of local variables here to make it easy to get to them. So as in like we can just change these values rather than changing them all the way through the code. So x equals 20. x is obviously the x position. And then we have the y position. And that's going to equal 48. I got these values through messing around and what looked sort of roughly right. And then we need a width. Uh, no, yeah, well, I'm calling it width, but really it's the, the way Pico does this is a bit weird. It, it doesn't, you don't have an X and a Y position and then a width and a height like you would with a Unity text box or anything like that UI element. You have an X and a Y and then you have a second X and a Y. So if you move one corner, the other corner stays rooted where it is. And then we want a height, which is going to be 80. Again, it's not height, it's the Y position of the other corner. So first off, let's draw our text box. And to do that, we're just going to do two rectangles. One rectangle is going to be a border and the other one is going to be just the rectangle that we're drawing over the top of. So we'll use rect fill for this, which draws, as you might guess, a filled rectangle. And then we're going to do X minus two, because this is the border rectangle, Y minus two, and then width plus two, height plus two. And then we need to do our, our other part, the, the actual rectangle that the text is going to be in. And this is just going to be X, Y, width, height. And we need to give it a color. We actually need to give the other one a color as well. The color is going to be six, which is, uh, one second, five. If I just run this game, this color up here, we just, oh yeah, I can't, can't show you the mouse when we're in game mode. But this color at the top here where it says making a Pico game, we're just going to use this same color scheme. I know it's a bit dull, but gives the game a bit of a cohesiveness. We can always make things look prettier later. So that's going to draw us our rectangle. And then the next part is obviously we need to write some text. So 
the way we're going to do this is we're going to start off with a for loop for i equals one we start at one because you get a um, null or a nil reference if you try and get zero of a table for some reason lua tables start at one uh, and then we want hash text dot stir so the hash for those of you who are more familiar with unity like i am the hash is like saying text dot stir dot count or text dot stir dot length it's getting you the length of the table and then to complete the loop we do do and then we do end so now that's our for loop and then inside of here we're going to say local text equals text dot stir and then get the first of them and then we're going to say local tx equals x plus one. I know it's not going to look very necessary to do these as local variables yet, but it will be necessary later on. And then local ty equals y, uh, sorry, uh, the plus one, I should explain this. The plus one is padding. So it's just going to give like a, a, a pixel worth of padding between the outside of the box and the text itself. And then y is going to be y minus five plus i times six. Now, this minus five, the, the text itself is minus, is six, six pixels tall. It's only minus five because we've got that one padding. So zero is at the bottom, like the zeros down here, 127 is up here. So we're going up, we're minusing to go upwards. However, we don't want to go upwards the full six because that puts us right up against the top of the box. So we're doing minus five because then we drop down one pixel and that gives us our padding at the top as well, our one pixel padding. Now, as for why we're minusing five rather than adding one, I guess would be the opposite, is because of what we said here about I having to start at one rather than zero, as we would do, as we'd be more familiar in Unity and C Sharp and everything. Because it starts at one, that means that we're adding six straight away because we're doing, we're doing the loop and we're timesing I. So we need to counter that first one because the first one doesn't want to be six, the first one wants to be zero. So we're taking five away from it and then the any after that will be you know added onto it it'll be next line down next line down etc and then we'll print our text text position tx ty and then the color is just going to be five and that should be that for now quickly save that so if we go into here and where do we want to go we want to go down to we want to go down to our draw function here and here where it says if screen flash equals false because that's how we we're, we're doing our death or our pain flash thing we're going to do it here so we're going to say if text.active is equal to true then draw text end so if we run this now and just delete them unnecessary tabs there we go we have our text box and you can see we can still move around and stuff but we'll deal with that shortly so the first thing i want to do is i want to center the text because it looks a bit rough just sat at the side there so we can do that really like surprisingly easy by if we go to uh, where is it here and instead of setting it to x plus one we're going to set tx to 64 minus the length of the text that we're using times two and there it's in the center that simple so it still looks a bit weird having this massive box and not much text in it so let's fix that next so if we go to well we stick stick where we are basically we just want to do a lot of changing of these values up here so the first thing is we're going to create a new one called local max w which is going to equal zero to start with and then we need to loop through all of the strings that we're passing in in our text string so once again i equals one and then we're going to text dot stir length with the with this hash symbol here and then once again do only this time in our loop we're going to say if the length of text dot stir i this one here is given as the length of the array so the amount if we pass in four lines of text this is going to give us four this is given as the length of the current string that we're looking at so if we're looking at the second string in here and it says hi, this is going to return two because the length of the string is two. If it is greater than max w, which any answer will be to start with because we set max w to zero, then set max w to that length. So what this does is it gives us the, le it sets max w to the length of the longest string that we have passed in. And then down here, I want to change these values. So this top one is going to be quite similar to what we just did for the centering of the text. Only it's going to equal minus max w times two, and then we want to do minus one to account for the border. Y is going to stay the same. We're just going to leave y at 48. I mean, we could center it, but it, the centering would work the same way as this. You just need to change a few of the variables. 
And then for the width, we're going to say x plus, and then we want to do max w times 4. And that's to account for the width of the characters. And now the next one is the number of lines that we're going to have. So we work out the lines here, but that's no good to us up here because obviously we've already done this by the time we get down here. So to do this, we're going to say y plus, and then we want the length of the string times six. And that should be, there we go. Now our box wraps itself around the text, which is nice. And we can still move around. So... Let's make it so we can't move around. So if we go to our main loop or our main code and we go up to our loop, at the very top, nice and simple, we're gonna say if, let's indent that, if text.active is equal to true then, and in here, if button, um, no, 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 there we go, that one, if button, if we press the button, then text.active equals false. And the reason we're doing this is because then we can say down here, return. And what that does is, if the text is active, we check to see if the button's been pressed, this button here. If the button has been pressed, then we set text active to false. However, if it hasn't been pressed, then we just return, and that means that none of the player controls are ever checked. So if we run that now, you have to trust me that I'm pressing the keys, but the player can't move. However, if I press that button, which is Z, I can now move. But now we've got no way of getting the text message back up. So that's going to be our next part of call. So in the initialization function up here, first off, let's get rid of this. So obviously we don't want to be setting random text from the start. And let's set this to false because we don't want a message popping up, you know, just at the start of the game for no reason. And then nice and simple, all we're going to do is go down here and say function new text text. And for those of you like me who are very unfamiliar with the way Lua works and everything, this could basically be whatever we set it as. So we're going to pass in a table of strings, you know, like we had up here when we set this value into this. And Lua will just, you know, put whatever the hell we tell it in there without us having to declare what that is. It's a very weird way to code for me. <laughs> so text.str equals text and then text.active equals false. No, no it doesn't, it equals true. And then finally, we want to go back over here and just under here, so after the return loop, after the uh, return call here, we're gonna say if button, and this time we want X, which is X in on the keyboard. Obviously, if you're using a, a controller, like a, you're meant to use a controller with Pico, it's designed for a controller, it would be the B button, I guess. And then we'll just give it a message. So we say new text, uh, let's see. Here is a text box. That's a nice long string. And then the second one, let's say it says things. So now if I press X, we get a message. And I can't move around. And if I close it, we can move around. And that is that. That, seemed, that felt like a short video. So... That is the end of this video. Hopefully it wasn't too short. I've tried to keep these Pico. I mean, Pico's a fun little tool. I didn't want to make hour and a half long videos like I have been known to do for Unity. So yeah, I'm I am aware that a lot of people have been asking for this video. So I'll try not to leave it as long between the next Pico video. And also if there's anything else you want to see me do in Pico, like it doesn't have to be, I'm quite open to making other videos. It doesn't have to just be this like little making a game series. I can do like one-off things as well. If you've got things you want me to do, just let me know. And if I am capable of doing them, <laughs> I will will do my best. So uh, yeah, all that's left to do now is to thank my amazing Patreons. You're all very appreciated, but of course the most appreciated of all the appreciated people are the super supporters, the sugar daddy slash mama tier supporters. And those are Dave Maldine, Reg Reed, Gabriel White, Aaron Clark, Mr. Drunken Dragon, Crab Cake, and Julian. And yeah, all, all you guys keep an eye out on the Patreon in the coming weeks because um, the card game that I'm making, the next video in the on the channel will probably be another update on the card game game that is getting closer to a playable demo so and you guys obviously are first on the list to play said demo so uh, keep an eye on the patreon for that thank you for all your support thank you for everyone else who is supporting who's liking sharing joining in on the discord all that kind of thing and i will see you next time bye bye